Hello everyone, it's me, Monica P. Hall, aka Conduit of Healing, and it is time for our weekly messages for the collective. How is everybody's new moon and solar eclipse? How y'all doing out there? You a little tired? Feeling a little wrung out? Feeling a little like, what was that? That, my lovelies, was the universe removing from our lives things that are not in our best and highest good things that we no longer need and if you my dear sometimes misguided souls if you try to hold on to those things that were leaving that needed to leave that were not in your best and highest good because maybe you might be a little addicted to toxic things toxic people toxic situations you have my compassion because I know you're hurting someplace right now. So namaste, um, let stuff go. That that was the lesson. Just, just if it's trying to leave, just release. You know what I mean? Okay. It was a doozy for me too, but um, yeah. So I'm a little practice, practice at this. I, I can tell when the universe is trying to get me to release something or someone. I just go here, take it, take it. Take it. You can have it. I don't need it. I, I might think I need it, but I'm confused. I've been confused before. But you know what? Life always teaches me that you're just going to have to trust the universe, trust your intuition, and trust the process. Take it. Okay, so um, yeah, You, if you're listening to this message um, while you're kind of laying down, feeling a little worn out, a little wrung out, a little exhausted, a little tired, a little confused, maybe even hurting, feeling like you might be bleeding out a little bit, it will get better just as long as you stay in alignment with the universe. Otherwise, you're going to continue to get dragged. I know. I haven't even gotten to the point of this week's message, but I just needed you all to know what it is and what it's going to be, okay? Because that's going to set you up for this week's message, which I'm sure, as always, you will find utterly delightful. <laughs> um, anyway, before we get started, if you've been enjoying the messages that I have given to you previously, the other videos, make sure you're subscribing to the channel so that you will dag nab it. And I thought I turned the dag on phone off. Just bear with me as I bear with myself. Anyway. Um, if you've been enjoying the channel and you've been enjoying the videos, please make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Make sure you're sharing it with your friends. And if at the end of this video you enjoyed it, make sure you're hitting the like button and also comment, 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 people. Um, because we are really all in this together even though we're walking individual paths. Because life itself is a little bit like a symphony orchestra. like a like you know chamber music if you will everybody has their instrument everybody has their part but together we're trying trying to make beautiful music together doesn't always work out exactly some of us are a little um you know harsh in how we play our part in this big grand tapestry we call life some of us don't actually know how to use our instruments that's what i'm hoping to help you with through my practice through my services through these videos you know it, it the more practice you get at being yourself and the more you learn about yourself as an instrument the easier it is to kind of do this thing we call not just life but your life your individual contribution to this thing we call life Okay, so subscribe, like, and um, keep listening. So, this week's message, what does the crew have for us? You know, I did that little mwahahaha before. You're going to love this one. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? Perception is not reality. Why is it important to remove ego from outcome? Because the truth will be, despite your ego's approval or permission. What is in your best and highest good often conflicts with your desires. The more you invest your energy into reality, the quicker you will learn your life lessons and the better the outcome. Now, why am I 
letting you know perception is not reality because we have been misguided into believing that what we think is best for us is what our ego wants because we have not been taught or educated um, on how to identify our spiritual selves. Our spiritual selves doesn't really, it not even, I'm not even going to say it doesn't really. Our spiritual self has no desire to control anyone other than ourselves. Our spiritual selves has no desire to violate the free wills of others, nor does it tolerate the violation of free will of ourselves. So our spirit, our souls, remember I said before, it's really soul when you're embodied, it's spirit when you're no longer embodied, aka physically dead. So our soul really wants freedom, freedom of expression, freedom to be, freedom to experience, you know, with as little interference as possible. Clearly, that's not why we're here, right? <laughs> we're not here to be free without interference because why would you incarnate into a realm of free will where everyone has it if you didn't want to bump up against the challenges of other people's free will and figure out how you're going to express your soul in spite of the challenges or because of the challenges, it really depends on what needs to be developed within you in order for you to really enjoy all that this place we call earth, this time we call now is capable of giving you. Here's what I'm constantly dealing with when I'm dealing with clients, people under the impression that they are the only ones entitled to free will and their free will must be respected um, at all times under any circumstances. Now, these same people expect all of that from themselves and for themselves, but then when they realize your spouse has free will, your kids have free will, your job has free will, your friends have free will, um, which means what you want from them is just that. What you demand from them is just that. You do not get to decide their decisions. And I have to say this because in all the readings that I get, people are always trying to and I don't think they're consciously doing it, but they're trying to manipulate reality to fit their own agenda. I want my spouse to change so that I can get this, that, and the third from them. I want my kids to behave away in a certain way because I have certain expectations for them. I want my job to see me as um, a highly valued employee um, so that I can get this amount of money, this amount of respect, this amount of power, blah, 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 yada, 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 yada. That's not the reality, people. What's the reality? In the reality, jobs are called jobs for a reason. It means the business, the powers that be that run the business that are looking for a profit margin that may or may not have any investors that they have to pay back um, are not concerned with making sure that you're comfy and cozy and doing your job, especially if it's a multi-million dollar company, the more that they need to make in terms of profit margins, the more that they need to spend in terms of paying back investors, the more that they need to answer to others in order for them to continue to be business, the less of a human you become and the more of a tool you become. So I get a lot of people, especially in this economy right now, they're looking for, you know, uh, promotions. They're looking for um, raises. They're looking for proof that all this time and energy that I have given you, that I've invested in your company, that has made you rich or made you successful or made you a powerful entity, I want some of that back. Uh, 
uh, as long as it's within the guidelines of the law, and sometimes even when it's not, um, yeah, they don't have to do that. They don't have to do that because the thing is, is that what you signed up for was a paycheck. And when you signed up for your job, right, you signed up for a salary. And it, and given our current economy, and I'm always telling people, if you're working for big corporations and not paying attention to the job market, not paying attention to the global economy, you don't understand why a company is making the decisions that it's making. You just think, Oh, they make a lot of money. There, there's so much money. Mm, but is there? Because when you have investors, right? When you have to spend money on marketing, marketing money on advertising, money on like you know anywhere from hundreds to thousands of employees. When you have to worry about you know health benefits and so on and so forth. How much money really is there left? And how much money of, of that is paying bills? meeting obligations, you know, paying out um, employees so that in that grand scheme of thing, there's you, you know, one cog on the wheel that is the entire company screaming and screeching, I want more, I deserve more. Doesn't mean it's not true. You might want more. You might deserve more, but in order for a company to be success, successful, excuse me, they have to figure out well, how valuable is this employee? Are they in a role that we consider that we have to really pause um, and reflect on the plans we already have in place about spending, about um, you know overhead, so on and so forth? Mm, can I replace them? Can I replace them for somebody cheaper? See, you know, the thing about it is, is like, this is why in a lot of ways, entrepreneurship is making a comeback because at least you get to be human, even if you're working for yourselves. And as an entrepreneur, I'm going to tell you, you're going to work a lot more, <laughs> but at least, you know, in theory, you'll like your job and be very passionate about it. And hopefully you'll like your boss because your boss is you. You, you understood that, right? Um, so no, the reality is that when you work in a large corporation or you work in a company that may be having its own financial struggles that you know nothing about because you're so, and forgive me, low on the totem pole that you don't sit in the financial meetings with the heads of um, the company. You don't sit in the board meetings. You don't know what the goals are, whether or not they're how they're close to the goals, whether or not they're farther away from the goals. And here's the thing, when a company, and I'm speaking on this for a reason because a lot of you are asking me about jobs, 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 jobs. And you're going into it as you know human beings with feelings and not understand that this is business and the whole purpose of business is to remove the emotion from it. Um, that's why there's a difference between business and conscious business because conscious means, oh, I need to remember that you're a human being with your own stuff that's going on at home, with your own expectations that need to be met. I want you to be happy doing the job because I understand it's going to somehow affect your productivity, which is going to affect my company so regular jobs conscious jobs that's the difference between the two you need to understand that why because the reality is one monkey don't stop no show as they say meaning you're being upset with the company that, that you've gotten overlooked for promotions that they keep bringing in people for you to train um, and then promoting them. You know, you've been there for so long and, you know, they're, they're, you, you realize that your career at a particular place has plateaued. And your boss understands and their manager understands. That I just don't understand why no one's, you know, really appreciating me. Well, that's because your boss and your boss's boss have no say in how much money the board or the head of the actual entire company has allotted this you know, certain amount of money that is going to be used to give people promotions, to hire new people, um, to pay for lawsuits. And that's the other thing a lot of people don't know. The companies that you're working for are, they keep a lot of lawyers for a reason. If they have like, you know, a whole law department, 
you need to know, again, remember what I said earlier about trying to stay within the guides outlines of the law, and when they don't, they got to make sure that somebody is being paid to protect their interests. You got it? So listen, why am I telling you this? Why is it so important for you to see the reality of something as simple as a job? Because that empowers you to decide, what am I going to do? Am I going to suck it up? Stop complaining and just, you know, thank God I have a job, you know, and I get it. If that's what you need to do for right now, wonderful, do that. But no one's saying that that's where you have to stay for the rest of your life. Because if you're not happy in a job, it's like any other relationship. If you're not happy, you're going to act out on some level, right? And a lot of times, companies are just looking for you to start losing your shit. So, because now I have a reason to fire you. I have a reason, a reason not to promote you. I have a reason not to give you a raise. I have a reason. Listen, I wasn't going to do it anyway, but you just totally provided me with a reason. Or you can realize, okay, I, I, I've done as much as I can at this company. Um, there's no more for me to do. I need to start looking for another job. Now, here's the other thing, because I'm getting this a lot. You guys are inflexible as hell when it comes to finding your next source of income. Listen, I'm not saying that you should start one day as as in management and then go take a job as like you know something like a street sweeper unless that's what you want to do maybe the stresses of like being in management and waking up you know at ungodly hours to go into a toxic environment it's not something that you you know want to do anymore now you want to be a street sweeper you know it's less less stress for you um the hours are good the money's good if that's what you want to do that's great but some of you are out there saying, well, I do this and I only do this. And so therefore, if I'm being advised to look for a job in a different um, industry than what I am trained to do, but I'm qualified to do, I couldn't possibly. Listen, you're the one talking about how you ain't got no job. You ain't got no money. You're starting to freak out. Um, you start to have anxiety because you're, you're just not getting anything. What if there's nothing there for you to get? And that's the problem. So, shouldn't you have a little bit more of a flexible attitude and tell your ego, hey, ego, you know what? If I write a check from you and try to pay my bills with it, if I try to go to the grocery store and go, here's my ego credit card, like, you know what? They're going to laugh at me and think I'm crazy. I can't live off of ego. I, nobody cares my, my ego when it comes to paying bills. No one cares at the bank about ego when it comes to, I'm sorry, I don't have any money, but I have lots of ego. Can I pay you an ego? No, why not? Exactly. So people, not only is this, it sometimes it really is about survival. You also might be putting yourself in a position to discover new talents and new opportunities that you didn't even know you had and absolutely can end up, you know, a better lifestyle, a better quality of life, more money, more growth opportunity. But y'all just want what you want when you want it, even though, even though when there's literally nothing there saying, sure, we can help you. How are you going to manifest without the universe like doing its part? See, when, you, when you're doing that whole little law attraction thing, I, if nobody told you that the universe has to say yes, and it will always say yes, make no mistake, but yes could be next year yes, not the next five minutes yes. Doesn't mean the universe didn't do its job. It means I'm the universe and you're my creation. You were there having a fit, wallowing in your like, you know, sadness, wallowing in your ego tamper, temper tantrum, but I know what's in your best and highest good. So the thing that's going to not upgrade you, the thing that's not going to make you better, the thing that is not going to, um, you know, um, force you to change, to reevaluate, to humble yourself, 
I'm not giving you that right now. Look at you. You really think you run something up in here because I want what I want and I can't accept this and this and this and this. And this. All these opportunities are there, but my, I couldn't possibly. Okay. Well, don't. No one's going to force you to take a job that's quite available to you that, you know, pays your bills, your mortgage and leaves a little left over maybe for a vacation or, you know, paying for college funds for your kids. And few Nobody's going to force you to do that. But I'm telling you something, you keep betting on your ego and the ego is absolutely going to make sure you have anxiety, that you have fear, that you never feel safe doing anything, being with anyone. I mean, even living your life. Because it really is that aspect of yourself that refuses to see what's going on outside of it and around it, okay? So the perception may be, I'm great, I'm so good at what I do and I'm highly qualified and blah, blah, blah. The reality is there's, there's this many jobs and there's that many people that are applying for these jobs. So wouldn't it behoove you to go, okay, let me just go over my qualifications and my skills again and see in this new um, world of technology where all of these new jobs and emerging markets are all over the place. In this world where actually I can work online on a global scale, is it smart for me to keep casting my net in a pond that I've been in for two, three decades and not even thinking perhaps I need to go find a new fishing spot. I mean, think about it. Those of you who fish, right? If you're not catching, you know, anything at one fishing hole, one section of a river, um, one section of a lake, even one section of the ocean, what do you do? You move on to the next spot. Why aren't y'all doing that with your work? And speaking of moving on to the next spot, what's up with y'all not accepting who your partners are showing themselves to be and keep trying to project onto them who you want them to be? Perception is not reality. Reality is reality. Case in point, you... The partner you had in the beginning, there was so much promise. There was so much hope. Things were so simple. It was the honeymoon phase. Everything was so easy. Oh, that's a red flag. Oh, we can we can deal about with that later. Oh, wait, that's a little that's okay as long as they commit to me. Oh, wait, okay, we're committing. Mm, those red flags are there. They're kind of getting worse. All right, well, as long as like we can get married. Okay, we're married. All those red flags are there. Nothing has changed. Now we got a problem. If they would just do what I need them to do, if they would just be who I needed them to be, this whole thing could be really easy and working out, um, you know, you know, well for me, for me, for me. So it's just about you, huh? It's just about working out for you, right? Has it occurred to you that the reason why your partner has not become the person that you have imagined in your mind is because they have free will and they don't want to be that person? So now here we are. You want them to be this way. They don't have a problem with who they are. And so now we have a power struggle. So when you split up, oh, Monica, is so-and-so going to come back? Are they going to call? Are we going to make up? I mean, if they didn't think there was a problem with them, like, what are, do you have strings attached to it? Because they can come back tomorrow, except they're still going to be the person who they choose to be, and they're not going to be the person who meets all of your list of requirements who, of who you want to be with. Why can't you just accept that perhaps the person that you're with was never going to be the person you idealized in your mind? And that your ego really fucked you up when it said they could, they might, they should, I want. Like, that's not a conversation. In a relationship, you know what? This is why we're always talking about communication. Like, 
our relationship really will reflect the communication or the lack thereof. Either y'all are on the same page, trying to get to the same page, or you're not on the same page and you're trying to drag each other to your page as opposed to trying to figure out how are we going to make this work and meet in the middle. I don't know how many times I've had to say to somebody, listen, um, you want this person to be this, that, and the third, and you know, they don't have to do that. And the reality is for all these years, either verbally or in their actions or in their decisions, they've been telling you and showing you, I'm not going to be who you want simply because you want it, especially if it makes me miserable to become that person. Let's just say, oh my God, this person went through so much trauma and this, that, and the third, and I was just thinking that I could help them. Wait a minute, you gonna help somebody who never asked you to help them? The reality is they didn't ask you for your help. So what are you doing? Overstepping? Demanding? Throwing the ultimatums around? Emotionally manipulating? Emotionally blackmailing? Gaslighting? What you doing? Because here's I, what I know you're not doing. You're not listening to what they told you. I don't want to do that. I have no intention of doing that. Doing that is not my desire. Okay, well, then I'm going to leave you. Boo. Leave. Because the truth of the matter is maybe you shouldn't have been there in the first place. Because no one should feel like they are constantly being threatened in their relationship with abandonment. Perhaps you want to leave somebody who has always been there because you've been trying to force them to meet your fantasy because you were not accepting the reality of this is just who they, they are. And when you do that, if you had done that before things got too deep, before things got too complicated, how much drama, fighting, misery, hurt, um, abuse, verbal, psychological, physical, what have you. If you had just paid attention to all those red flags from jump, because that was reality, and not going, oh, let me run and get the rose-colored paint and paint over th these red flags. See, oh, let's see, that's a nice little pink. I can, pink flags, they're pink flags, not red flags. And then you call me going, are they coming back? Um, a lot of these people are not coming back if they realize that what they are going back into is a life that they left, a life that caused them unhappiness, or a partner who really doesn't want to be with who they are. They want an idealized version of them. Perception is reality. The red flags are real. Watch for the red flags. Oops. Sorry. Dis di you know, decide if how much you can deal with and how much you really can't deal with and realize while you're trying to make over these people um that will never work but making over yourself will always work perhaps your idealized version of them is toxic perhaps you are really distracting yourself with trying to control people rather than addressing your own issues. Like for real though, I mean like who wants to be in a relationship with anybody who's controlling? Listen, no. Nobody wants to be with anyone who just can't give love because they want to give it to you. If we're going to start with all the conditions and, and, the, and the list of must-haves, listen, that's great in the beginning, not after you've already built something and you gave the impression you were okay with who they are, and now you lock them in and thinking, hi, here's my list of demands. I need you to do this, do this, do this. Like, I was dealing with, speaking with someone who has a great relationship. But they were upset that their partner required me time. And people, I'm an introvert. So let me just speak on the introverts. Introverts are really not going to want to talk to you every single day. I don't care how much they love you. So if you're really a needy person and you need to be spoken to every single day, don't date an introvert. Because we're not going to choose our well-being and sanity over you and your insecurity issues that's what a therapist for is for 
If you have a good time, this person, when you're with this person, you have to go a whole 24 hours where they're not up your ass and you're not up their ass and they're breathing their own free air, not your exhale and vice versa. Like if that, which is normal, by the way, and healthy, if you can't handle that, you're going to honestly be alone because at some point everybody needs personal space and the fact that you constantly need reassuring means you're all you got a hole that no one else can fill it but you like you're what's missing not your partner but yeah ha, y'all y'all some of y'all out there ruining your relationships because you just won't go to therapy and deal with yourselves i mean namaste to you that but you know it's not them it's you if there's really nothing wrong with the relationship and you are finding yourself creating problems because you need somebody to, um, you know, heal your mama or daddy issues, that is not our responsibility, folks. That is what therapy is for. You got mama issues, you got daddy issues, please, oh, please. Do not bamboozle a prospect uh, of a romantic partner by projecting all onto them, all the issues you have with your parents. It's just not fair. And not to mention, it's just not attractive. We're not here to fix you. We're here to love you. It's your job to fix you. Perception is not reality. Um, government. And we might go a little bit longer today. I already see we're a little bit long, but... Government, family, friends. If you've surrounded yourself with people that you are just learning are toxic assholes who are shocking you with their lack of empathy, lack of compassion, their cruelty, their ignorance. Listen, I'm not going to say that, you know, you should not give them the opportunity to become educated and change. But if it becomes an all out kind of tug of war, the reality is they're toxic asshole who don't care about other people, just themselves and their immediate surrounding friends and or family. They are selfish. They are racist. They are sexist. They are homophobic. Blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying. That's the reality. You trying to overlay your per your perception. When you start making excuses for these people, oh, they had a rough childhood. Oh, you know, they went through trauma. Oh, the how does that negate the fact that they're horrible people? It doesn't. But it does now make you look like a questionable person because you will make excuses for horrible people rather than going, ew, my mistake, you're horrible, this is not what I want in my life, this is not what I want around me, this is also not the message I want other people in my life to get about me. You're, I have racist family members. I have racist friends. I have people who are being discriminated against in my life. Do I want the people that I have in my life who are being victimized and oppressed by people that I'm calling friends and family thinking I approve of that? The reality is if you're making excuses, you do. You're not going to change the perception of the person who's being discriminated against, who's being oppressed, who's being hurt, who's being, you know, hunted down in one way or the other, who's not being given the full um, opportunity to just exist and express themselves, you know, the way the creator of all things intended for all of us. If you're not moving away from that, if you're making excuses for it, you approve. It's really simple. So that's all I have for you today, and it absolutely is a lot. Please just stop feeling the need to overlay the harsh truths of reality, the limitations of free will for yourself and others, the truth of who people are that we interact with, Stop trying to appease your ego to the detriment of 
reality, to the detriment of truth, to the detriment of relationships, not just with others, but yourself. If you constantly are chasing after fantasies rather than living in truth, you have nobody to blame for those harsh life lessons but yourself. Reality is right here. Your ego is right here. And your energy is neutral. When you choose ego, reality is like, I'm still here. I, you can't just close your eyes or just ignore me and I don't exist. What you're actually doing is empowering it to crush your ego and your fantasies. Whereas if in the beginning, your ego is like, I didn't like this. I didn't like this. I don't like that. I want to change them. I want them to change. I want to be treated like blah, blah, blah. But the reality is screaming, so? Isn't it so much easier to go, let me just take my little hurt feelings and my little ego and let me go over here into reality because I can recover from these minor affronts and, and, you know, minor insults of my ego a lot better than I can if, you know, reality comes and crushes and obliterates my ego. That is what the crew and I are trying to get you to understand. Your perception, if it's got an ego filter on it, that is not reality. Reality is the thing that you can't get rid of. Reality is the thing that no matter what you do, how you try, what twists and turns you take, it's still there going, hey, what's up? How you doing? I've been waiting for you. You ready now? Can we deal with each other? Oh, no. Oh, you got to go through the rigmarole again? You got to have your, your ass handed to you one more time. You got to have your heart broken to you one more time. You got to be fired from a job one more time. You got to be poor one more time before you realize I'm still here. You got free will. I mean, if that's how you want the story to go, that's how the story is going to go. Or you can just stop and go, I want this. All I hear is this petulant child. I want, I want, I want. I want, I want, I want. And I need this and I need this. And then there's reality going... Or we could do it this way, which may at first hurt your feelings, but in the long run, do you see how it's actually going to teach you something? You're actually possibly, most likely going to be better. Throw away this made up version of love in your life and see love that's available and whether or not it's going to make you better. So really think about that. What are you perceiving with an ego filter and feeling like you've been fighting it for such a long time that you can't get rid of? That's likely reality. Okay? Choose reality. Fuck ego. Got it? Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys turning in every week. Um, I appreciate your watching it once again. If you are enjoying these messages, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're liking this video. If you need some help with this whole thing we call life, you need some clarity, you need some tools, you need some insight, you need some inspiration, please make sure you're contacting me for a reading, a light worker mentoring session. And if you need some healing, you've got some energy blocks, and energy block can just be ways of thinking. Reiki. Contact me for a Reiki session. I'm still doing distance healing sessions, even though we are still in the middle of this. You know what we're in the middle of. And I hope you're still masking up. Take care of yourself, people. Um, and also, it is holiday season. I have beautiful, wonderful uh, Reiki charged healing products. Aromatherapy candles, aromatherapy room sprays that can be used on the skin. Um, body butters, healing, um, you, spirit, mind, and body is what Conduit of Healing does, and I've extended it to our body and tea line. So wait until the end of the video. You will see the links to all of these things. Thank you so much once again for watching. Please, again, did I say a comment? I know I said it, but do it again. Do it again. And make sure you're sharing this great news with your friends. I appreciate you so much. Mwah. Namaste.